How's it going, YouTube Nation? This is Theoretical Geeks here with an instructional video on how to properly flash your Motorola Atrix 4G with an aftermarket customized ROM, that is an operating system. Now that said, there's already a lot of information out there on how to do this. However, it's poorly consolidated and it's not written by and large at a level for your daily average user. It's really written by developers, intended for developers to do this. So what I've attempted to do with this instructional guide is make it not only comprehensive to where this process will actually work, because let me tell you, it's rather difficult and pedantic, but also palatable to the quote unquote noob user. So I want this guide to really make it easy or rather unlock the unlocking process to flashing your Motorola Atrix. So that said, there's a couple more disclaimers I need to throw out there before we get started. Make sure you do not follow this guide if you have already updated your phone via the inbuilt automatic updates on the Atrix to Android 2.3.4 operating system. If you do that and you use this guide, you will break your phone. So do not use this guide if you've already done that. Otherwise, uh, I need to point out that this guide does not cover any sort of kernel installations or for that matter, installation of any software or firmware beyond what's necessary to install your customized ROM. That said, I am not responsible for any damage you may cause to your phone. With that said, why don't we go ahead and get started. Now, before we do anything, make sure you back up your data. This includes the pictures, videos, documents, music, contacts, and what have you that you don't want to lose in the fa excuse me, flashing process. So, I suggest creating a folder on your desktop labeled Atrix Backup just to remain parsimonious with the rest of these instructions. Once you've done that, go ahead and create another folder on your desktop labeled Atrix Modding. We'll be storing most of the firmware packages necessary to mod your Atrix here. Okay, now once you have these two folders in place, we're going to go ahead and download all the requisite software and firmware to make this procedure happen. Now, I'm not going to go through the process of downloading and organizing all that material. All the instructions on how to do that properly are listed in the text below down here. So, make sure you pay attention to those instructions and follow them as best as you can. I've listed a couple of good places to go ahead and find custom ROMs, as well as all the other links to the requisite software and firmware. Alright, now presuming you've went ahead and done all that, you need to go ahead and set an hour or so away or rather to the side to follow through this instructional guide. It's going to take some time. Now, the first thing we want to do is make sure that your Atrix is already up to date with its drivers. Presuming you've already installed the Motorola device driver software, go ahead and open it up. You can navigate to this software by typing Motorola space driver space installer.exe in the search bar under your start menu. Once you have it opened up, go ahead and connect your Atrix to your PC. Mine's already connected. Um, I'm not going to walk through this per excuse me, this procedure quite yet. Um, it's pretty straightforward, so I'm going to wait to show some more complicated things. Alright, so once your Atrix is connected, go ahead and select Update Drivers under the Operation Mode column in the bottom left corner of your program user interface. Go ahead and let it start, let it update your drivers, do its thing, and then close out of the program. Alright, now you're phone should still be connected as mine is and what we're going to do now is go ahead and copy that selected ROM of yours onto your actual Atrix. Now to do this you're going to want to perform the following steps. Like I said your phone should be plugged in. Make sure that you navigate to your USB connection settings by dragging down the top of your menu. Which mine is not wanting to do that. There we go. Drag it down. USB connection, click USB mass storage, OK. Now it should be in mass storage mode and a splash screen should pop up on your PC indicating that it is. You want to go ahead and open that folder to view its files. Once that's done, go ahead and drag your zip file of your customized ROM into your MB860 or your Atrix rather. Um, onto its internal SD card. Once that's done, you can go ahead and close out of that folder view and we're going to flash your phone back to its original ROM now. Okay, so what we've done so far is we've preloaded your 
customized ROM, so when we get to the point where we actually want to install it, it's there on your internal SD. Okay, so, like I said, now we need to flash your phone back to its original ROM. To do this, we're going to open up the RSD Lite software package that you downloaded already. Now, before you open that up, I want you to unplug your phone from your PC if it's still connected, then shut the phone down. I'm going to unplug it. Or actually, I need to upload the particular customized ROM that I want to use. And I'm going to upload Alien version 3. It's supposed to be a very good operating system, so we're going to go ahead and check it out. Now, what you're looking at here on my phone is the original flashed ROM. I did that yesterday already, so I'm not going to go through that process again because it does take a bit of time, and I do want to finish this video tonight. Um, but the process is pretty simple. I've outlined it in the directions in the text, again, below this video. To do it, you're going to... So I'll walk you through half the process. And again, at any point, if you have questions or concerns or you screwed up and you don't know what you did wrong, just shoot me an email and I'll try to help you out. So once you have your customized ROM uploaded to your internal SD, go ahead, close out the folder view, and unplug your device. Okay? Now, before we flash this. We need to first unplug the phone, like I said, then shut it down. Right. We need to shut down. And we're going to shut down. Okay, wait for it to power off. Power it off. Now you're going to take off the back cover. Actually, I should probably do this in front of the screen so you know what I'm doing. It's not too difficult to take off. If you can't get the cover off, you probably shouldn't do this instructional guide, but that's your decision. Take the battery out. Take your SIM card out and your SD card if you have one in there. I do not at this time. Replace the battery. Replace the cover just for safety. Okay, and now we are ready to flash the original ROM. Now what you need to do next is reboot your device while holding the volume button up or rather, holding the volume rocker in the up position. So I'm going to demonstrate that. Hold it up. Continue to hold it up until you see RSD recovery. I'm sorry, starting RSD protocol support. Now, once you see this screen, you're going to go ahead and open up your RSD Lite software. Get that going. And then you're going to drag your original ROM file, which it's a long crazy name, I'm not going to say it, but it's listed in the instructions below. Go ahead and drag that into the file name area at the top of the program screen. Once that's done, you should go ahead and plug in your Motorola Atrix back to your PC, like so. Once it's plugged in, RSD Lite should register it as being plugged in. It should read as NS Flash Olympus or something to that effect under the model column and connected under the status column. Once that's all done, go ahead and click start and patiently wait for your Atrix to flash back to the original ROM. After it reboots and reads as pass under the result column of RSD Lite, unplug your Atrix from your PC, close out of the RSD Lite software, and then power down your Atrix. So I'm going to skip all that. Let's presume that I've done it, which I have and it's red as pass on RSD light. I'm going to unplug my phone and because I'm in RSD protocol support right now and it didn't reboot, I'm going to have to take the battery out to manually shut it down. So let's do that again. Alright, so after you've got your Atrix flash back to its original ROM, again with the custom ROM preloaded to the internal SD, we need to unlock the device now before we can proceed. So I just turned it down. And that will be explained in my next video, so why don't you check it out by clicking here. Peace out.